These are my honest thoughts and comments about Razer Blade Pro, which I used professionally for last 8 months. Before we had a studio, I uh, used a custom built workstations. But now workstations are in studio and I needed a replacement. I love MacBook Pros, but unfortunately they are seriously weak for CG and VFX. The only thing I knew for sure is that I would like to have a laptop. My main interest was in powerful GPU because I'm using Octane and I want to use all the benefits of it, especially Live Viewer and all that fancy workflow. When I found the Razer Blade Pro, I... <gasps> GTX 1080, 32 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte super fast SSD, 4K EXO, however it's pronounced, touch screen. It has all necessary ports, three 3.0 USB ports, headphone jack, SD card reader, Thunderbolt port, and HDMI output. I delivered several complex projects using just that laptop. I'll be honest though, I didn't do final render cause for that I have my big stations and I'm just sending final renders to render out there. The most appealing thing in Razer Blade Pro and whole Razer Blade line was Razer Core. Razer Core is basically this good looking box that allows you to put a GPU in it and you will have an external GPU connected to your laptop. So that way I have GTX 1080 in laptop and GTX 1080 Ti in Razer Core. It's really nice, it's plug and play additional performance. This laptop with Razer Core is almost half of the power of my main workstation. It's reality, it's really cool. I finally can be mobile and still be able to produce complex CG and VFX scenes. The only thing I'm not doing with it is final render. Why would I if I have 24 seven access to a uh, render farm? But if this would be my one and only machine, it's still really 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 powerful sounds like a dream doesn't it well not quite first thing i noticed straight out of the box was that colors are totally off they were oversaturated and over contrasty punch in a face kind of contrasty so i bought a calibrator that spider 5 screen calibrator thing it didn't solve the issue because results were too warm and I uh, dropped a message to support team. They described a big complicated process about how to solve the issue and that it's a problem related to NVIDIA, conflict with their software. So I just decided to buy another one, the X-Rite i1 color co uh, screen calibrator. This one did a better job, but still colors were off. So I finally asked Razer support for help our two weeks long email conversation ended up with a guy saying, uh, just mess with Nvidia settings or call them directly and they will help you. Wow. I mean, I bought a laptop from Razer, not Nvidia, but all right. So I did exactly as suggested, manually adjusted settings. And now at least I have uh, more or less correctly displayed colors in all Adobe software. It means I can color grade stuff and retouch photos and pretty much see the correct colors. Another issue was with Razer Core. Yes, indeed, it's a plug and play, additional performance, works cool, looks cool, but it's not always connected to my laptop, is it? So another day I just updated NVIDIA drivers and then when I connected Razer Core to my laptop, 
screen went just black and restart didn't help, nothing helped. And I couldn't resurrect the machine, I thought it's dead or something. And I used Razor Blade's recovery option that they have in the laptop. I just press the button and it gets back to factory defaults. Wipes out all the data and gives you a clean machine. So I did that, reinstalled a bunch of softwares again and just forgot, forgot about it. After some time, without thinking, without realizing what happened, I updated NVIDIA drivers again. When I connected Razer Core, obviously I ran into absolutely same problem. Then I realized that it's somehow related to NVIDIA updates and connecting the Razer Core. I have TeamViewer installed on all my machines, so I decided to remotely connect to my laptop and I found out that the system is still working, it's just not displayed properly. Luckily, I had a NVIDIA drivers file on my desktop, so I blindly installed drivers and everything started to work again. I have only one question. Why is it not mentioned in instruction? There is no single line saying that Razer Core has to be plugged to laptop when you're updating drivers. It wouldn't be a problem if I would have two games installed on it, but I have tens of softwares and plugins and fonts and bunch of stuff. Problem like that is really, really, really painful. Razer's famous keyboard. Oh yeah, it looks beautiful. I can customize all those LED lights and it's just fun. It feels nice, it looks nice. Touchpad is in unusual position. I've set it to the right, kind of replicating a regular desktop placement of input devices, which at first is unusual, but once you get used, it's re actually really convenient. All the gestures to switch up desktop, apps, all works great. About a month, month ago, so after seven months of usage, keyboard started to glitch. Sometimes spacebar or other keys just not working, not reacting when you're actually pressing them. And sometimes they overreact and type the symbol twice. And what is more important, from time to time, keyboard just shuts down. Lights go off for several seconds and then it comes back. As I started to talk about input devices, I will mention uh, Razer Arochi mouse, which I love so much. It's compact, it's beautiful and it feels great in my hand. I'm taking it everywhere where my laptop goes. Initially, I bought it for my Microsoft Surface laptop. It worked and it still works like a charm. But here's a funny thing. Razer mouse is working perfectly with Microsoft Surface laptop, but doesn't work as good with Razer's own laptop. This mouse in wireless mode disconnects every three to five minutes. Then I have to press all those forward buttons Wait while it blinks several seconds, then starts working again. The issue was so annoying that I started to use cable that they include with the mouse. And this is a really cool option that I can use it wirelessly or with the cable. A couple of weeks ago, I damaged the cable. This is a spare, spare one. And I had to use it wirelessly only. It was a nightmare. And this experience made me think that there might be a problem with Bluetooth. And what you think? A week ago, Bluetooth just disappeared from my machine. Driver's update didn't solve the problem, restarting the machine didn't solve the problem, so I obviously contacted Razer support. And their suggestion was simple, just restore the system. I did it, and I spent two days installing all the software that I need. Bluetooth is working indeed, but apart from that, none of the issues are gone. The colors are still off, Keyboard is still glitching, mouse is still disconnecting. And in case with keyboard, it's worth mentioning that I'm not eating next to my laptop, I didn't spill any liquid, and in fact, I'm cleaning it every time before I put it in my case. I can live with that as long as I can keep doing my resource demanding tasks. So these are my honest comments about Razer Blade Pro. I love this laptop as much as it annoys me with its little flaws. This laptop is a full video and VFX production powerhouse and not many others can compete with that. If you like this video, consider subscribing because I think I might do a couple more reviews about high-end equipment, cameras, workstations. Apart from that, for those of you who don't know, I teach computer graphics and visual effects on my channel. 
So if it's something you're into, you will find a lot of interesting videos there. Thanks for watching. Peace. Almost forgot, if you guys are curious uh, why and how I wrote something on a laptop surface, I left a link below in video description for these markers. They can write on any surface, which is pretty cool. Why? Because why not?